Um, and then the business grew uh, nicely uh, through their good efforts, and we find ourselves needing a, uh, a more operational focus as the company grows and, and leaving Simon to work on more strategic matters, uh, although he's ubiquitous, as uh, all the staff know, 24-7 uh, ubiquitous, he doesn't seem to sleep because um, he cares so much. And so I became a chief operating officer uh, in November 2018, and I retained my NED role on the board, in fact, as uh, of the group board, in fact, as uh, chairman. I think, um, although I didn't notice it, there was a, a little sense of uh, nervousness about some staff for some reason uh, when I joined, um, uh, but uh, I find it a really uh, enjoyable and uh, rewarding place to work. I uh, soon discovered, though, there was a lot more to the eye. When you actually become operational, you find a, a lot, lot more stuff going on that you never thought was, uh, you would find. Um, and my uh, brief, really, um, there was a couple of major projects, the ISO accreditations we got through, um, but was really to take over all the operational activities um, of, the, of the UK. So um, some of the things that probably um, I found that... Uh, weren't uh, optimal, like policies. So often we have, uh, someone will say, we don't have a policy for that. Or we have a verbal policy, but nobody could agree exactly what it was. Was there a written version? Does it still make sense? And maybe did it ever make sense? Um, so we refer to a clean desk policy, but we've never had one until uh, yesterday morning. Um, and I introduced um, a policy on RFOs, because it's a contentious situation where we have a, an incident, and the, the O in uh, RF is, is contentious in itself, and the staff didn't know how to react to requests for people who wanted root cause analysis um, or uh, a more formal, in-depth um, response to an incident. And of course, what, what's actually going on is our customers, what, some are very interested in the technical details, and, and you all have your customers who want to know what is going on, and you want a, a coherent story, and often quite quickly. Um, these are the sort of things I've heard. Uh, they're not necessarily wrong or bad, but they get repeated, and um, sometimes they just become automatic. So, for instance, it was uh, when there's only one person has a problem, then it's difficult for a support and uh, escalated support to track down problems. So, uh, in fact, the, uh, some of the things that we've introduced, like community Slack, have helped that because that can be uh, a canary for issues and we can s certainly more easily see when more than one customer has a problem. But sometimes we've had deep-seated problems when you've got identical, f or you think you have identical free switches, for instance, uh, instances, occasionally we've had one um, behave in a strange way. So that is very tricky to track down. It could be certain types of calls get routed through a certain um, availability zone. Uh, but one of the problems is that uh, when you're doing support, and support is quite a hard subject, it's difficult to do it well um, in uh, what is, can be a, a, a tense uh, environment when customers are uh, having trouble with the service, it's easy just to sort of cut and paste and, uh, standard sorts of replies, which then, if, if you find yourself regularly consuming support, they start to become a little bit empty. Um, and we're trying to avoid that. And I think the, uh, well, I'm pleased to say that the support team, I find, have progressed really well throughout this year. Um, and whilst we've always done things a certain way, some of those ways are uh, absolutely correct, spot on. But Everybody's um, ready to take, has, has been ready to take a fresh look at uh, how we do support, how we respond, how we escalate. So um, I hope we've been listening to customers uh, and acting on that, um, trying to avoid repeating mistakes. So there's nothing worse to me than having a situation where we have a suboptimal reply or a situation and we don't, then we repeat the same thing 
over and over again. We don't learn from it. Um, and that's about taking ownership of the situation. So when you see a situation, you've got to decide whether we overreact or we, we underreact and how much effort do we put into updating knowledge bases, for instance, um, maybe operating a different way in, in to avoid the mistakes. And that's very difficult when you're busy. That's one of the problems I think a growing company has when it's um, uh, ha hasn't had the spare capacity in staff to pause. I go, okay, that's all happens. Uh, great, you know, then you relax and you start moving on to your next job or the backlog. Um, so you're not actually improving the way you operate. So uh, by investing in, in uh, people um, and giving someone like me time to uh, focus on these things, I think we've, we've started to see some significant changes. I suppose I'd say um, the way we operate, with apologies to Eric Morecambe, I'd say we have all the right tools and information but not necessarily used in the right order sometimes. Um, sometimes we get very close to doing a good job and don't quite um, uh, get there. But like I say, there's been a significant uh, Im improvement. Um, we, we try not to blame staff because it doesn't help. Um, being, I think one of the things I picked up from Simon very early on was straight talking. Uh, you know, I, don't, I, I, I need to be told when things have happened, good or bad, and, and I'd like a comprehensive answer to a, a simple question rather than to having to go back and dig deeper and ask more questions because somebody is, for some reason, off obfuscating the, the truth. Um, and the leadership that I think um, I need to bring and I see others bring, my colleagues bring, really helps in that, in that way. And the, um, the, the word ownership, um, which was the opening to yesterday's um, uh, event, uh, the extreme ownership, um, is it's a fascinating book, I do recommend you read it, um, is really important. And that is about giving some of the staff the ability to fix some of these things themselves be open and, and, um, and take control of situations on the ground, as well as coming back to their colleagues uh, for support. So, um, some uh, successes and, and progression. Uh, so, simple things like we now will take um, tickets over a phone, we'll create a ticket for you. Um, at our discretion, if it's really busy, it's not appropriate. Uh, I think mostly we, we would like people still to submit directly to, uh, tickets directly so that we've got accurate information. Um, we're trying to be more proactive on the status page, uh, give more information, do things like uh, we separate the, the ownership of comms and um, uh, uh, the tech f technical fix of uh, any situation now where we can, um, just simple things about giving up, saying when we're going to next update the status page and as appropriate, um, I think, you know, I've seen Charles do extensive um, where necessary, which fortunately isn't that often, but extensive, extensive uh, reports on what's been happening. Uh, a, 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 an interesting uh, development was community slack. And by the way, to be clear, <laughs> you know, I'm just, I think uh, as the expression I use sometime about uh, success as many fathers and failure is an orphan. This is what the company's been doing. This is not me. So for instance, the community Slack idea was not my idea, um, but it's been a um, very good one, I think. It's taken a while to get some legs. Um, we knew it w there was a bit of a risk because it could be a bit of a bun fight in there. It, could, it gives the opportunity for people to use it as we didn't intend it, which is not quite the same as using it in the wrong way. For instance, direct messaging staff. Um, and we have to be careful about going, this is not the official way to get support. But it's been very useful to some of our uh, customers and very useful to us. And to be able to very quickly um, give a one-to-many update on a situation rather than work out a very carefully worded formal status page update um, has, has been very useful and I hope, hope you guys will find it useful and I, you know, 
I said I want to listen to customers. I'd like uh, feedback on some of that. So I think there's a subtle change of tone in comms. You heard me just say the difference between using something in a way we didn't intend rather than using it wrongly. It's that sort of understanding that the, some black and white um, uh, messaging we were giving doesn't always go down well, it's not appropriate. Um, I hate that horn every day. Um, try <laughs> that, is, that is the last one, surely. Uh, if, if, uh, if Dan could extend his uh, uh, thermonuclear war to sandwich fans, that would be fantastic. Um, try not to overpromise. I mean, support staff are eager to help. Um, and they'd love saying things like, our engineers are, you know, are trying to do things so they, the, things don't go wrong again. But that's, um, it doesn't always, uh, isn't always the case. It's a very easy thing to say, and I'd like to see some substance ab uh, about it. Uh, you'll, you'll, if you get a support ticket, we say we've escalated it. Well, we really do escalate it, but now it's done in a much more formal way. And we're thinking about how we can reveal some of that to reassure you that, that it's not an empty word. I mean, you get reassured by um, your experience with us mostly. But for instance, if we gave you the time and the escalation, internal escalation ticket number, even though it's of no direct use to you, it might help reassure people that we really are looking at things. Um, uh, there's... Um, there's a thing called nudges that various people refer to in books, and one little nudge we've done is do a, an internal update on uh, uh, high-priority tickets, urgent tickets, and other situations um, twice a day, or sometimes more than that. And it gives visibility, because we use Slack, maybe we overuse Slack, but we use Slack, and it gives visibility to support staff colleagues, anybody else who, who's in the support channel, including the uh, escalation staff as to what appears to be top priority um, and, uh, and where stuff has sort of got stuck in the weeds and isn't progressing. And we found that to be really useful. Um, so we are uh, we're having a porting process review. The porting process uh, is a difficult subject again. Uh, but we've, uh, we've certainly improved our activities in there, and we've introduced the 9,001, 27,001 um, uh, certificates. We've achieved those. Uh, we've got our first annual review, and it's, I, th I, th I would safely say that the, uh, the, the, the attitudes and uh, disciplines inside those um, accreditation, those certifications are really useful to the business, but we've got to go further to deploy them and each year the, the, um, the audits become tougher, I understand, and we've got them coming up in um, May and June. Um, so we try and take the positives out of those, not just achieve them. Uh, and we've improved customer engagement in some ways. I think we've still got a way to go on that. So we um, have whiteboarding sessions with customers, um, and we want to be more proactive in, in actually there's some, you know, maybe ringing up some of our customers about how they interrupt with us, um, you know, actually be reaching out in terms of, and checking that you're interrupting with us the way we would like you to, especially respecting uh, SRV records and so on, because that way you'll enjoy and consume the best possible service from us. You might be interested in the tools we use, nothing particularly special, um, Jira, Confluence, getting people to use these tools, those two in particular, uh, Jira for projects and, and tickets and, and Confluence for obviously for um, content, uh, has been tricky, but we've got that ball rolling. If you, if you, you know, we've pushed that big ball up the hill and it's, it's over the top and it's, it, we've got some momentum there, which I'm pleased to say. Zendesk is used extensively. We're not massive fans of, of that and that's going to be reviewed. Slack, a uh, brilliant tool, but you know, it has its downsides, as you may know. We get some overuse of that, but the transparency in the business is um, quite astounding to me, really. So you know, the default way th information comes in, tickets and lots of other things, invoices, all sorts of things, is team at, and everybody gets, you know, gets a ticket and um, everybody can see what's going on. 
which is one of the reasons why it's possible for remote working to be very effective. Um, SIP3, uh, it's not completely rolled out, but it is working mostly for us to do um, call tracing, and that's an area we need to, to uh, work on. Obviously, with stasispage.com, it's not ideal for the way I'd like us to uh, uh, disseminate information about incidents. I did mention this last year. I, I've not found a third-party alternative which uh, suits our needs, and we're not really ready to uh, write our own. And like I said, the, the introduction of community Slack has helped um, uh, us in that way. Can I just a show of hands, actually, who is not on community Slack? Okay. You might want to give it a go. Um, just you can mail in, get a ticket, and, and, uh, uh, and, and join if you think it's the right thing for you. Um, we're looking, as, as, as it happens, the company was completely rem uh, remotely focused. Um, and uh, when I joined, no office at all. Now we flipped that on its head. Um, uh, but the support and uh, porting staff don't work remotely, except for out of hours for support. Uh, but we're just um, partly uh, uh, catalyzed by the uh, COVID-19. Um, we're deploying Chromebooks and allowing, you know, preparing ourselves to work remotely. Um, the interesting thing about Chrome, we use Macs almost everywhere. Um, Chromebooks is, is uh, means you're restricted, of course, to some of the applications you can put on. So it's got some um, some little hurdles to get over, and the interface is uh, is slightly different. Uh, but um, the central control we can get with the Chromebooks is, is, is interesting and provides far more uh, security. And leadership is a tool. Um, you, you, you get some of that from Simon, some of that from the from from Brad yesterday, and it's um, it's something that we 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 want to invest in. Uh, coming up, uh, more work on international porting. Love to overhaul our portal, extend our API. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we're going to have a review of our, uh, our porting tooling because it's it's a bit. There's a bit of a technical debt there. There's a lot of technical debt there. Uh, starting to measure our in, uh, internal activities more. So we we don't do a lot of measurement. We've got satisfaction ratings, and we sort of we know we have, we've got Zendesk reporting, um, but some of it is uh, possibly goalless reporting or not and not thought through. And certainly that is something that's going to change. Uh, phenomenally this year. So, for instance, we're going to be looking at uh, the number of touches we have per ticket. Uh, as, as part of that, deciding what a good number of touches are. It, it's a complicated area because the more we improve our knowledge base and improve our service, um, the less support tickets we get. Maybe we'll just get more, get harder tickets, um, and maybe the harder tickets need more touches to resolve. So, it's not simply. Have I, has that gone up or down? It's trying to look at these things in, in the round. Um, I think I've mentioned API improvements twice. Must mean it's really important. Uh, a detailed beta status. Uh, we mentioned something in beta yesterday. What does it mean? Half of Google was in beta at one stage or another. It seems. Can you charge for something in beta? Do we let customers know why it's in beta, when it might be coming out? What? Uh, so for instance, I think um, US numbering was in beta. Um, and uh, uh, one of our support staff helpfully pointed that out to a customer. He said, well, why are you charging me for it? Well, in fact, it was in beta because um, it wasn't, you couldn't conf uh, uh, configure via the API, which I think is still the, c the case today. Um, so that, is, that needs to be conveyed. We've got about six or seven uh, uh, projects that are in beta, and their exact status need to be uh, conveyed to the staff, let alone to the customers. Um, so we're going to uh, assess things like real-time chats. We've talked about it before, um, but you know, we, I think the, com the, sl the community Slack is quite good on, on for that, but one-to-one -one real-time chat possibly, uh, replacing some of our tools, uh, get a better monitoring of your call profile, and as we improve our monitoring and understanding, seeing how we can extend that out um, uh, to you guys. Other work we've been doing through the year, we, um, we uh, 
uh, over with our account types, uh, up the minimum spend uh, to 250 uh, for the startup accounts, introduce uh, or encourage people to take uh, annual contracts or, or longer. Some people have taken up to five-year contracts uh, and given financial benefits uh, to those. And so we've got a lot more people under contract now, uh, which is, a, I think, a benefit to, to both parties. Uh, significant changes of uh, 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 MSA and tidying up of associated documents. Been enjoying having SIP Centric on board, sharing support between the two offices, Bristol and Birmingham, and there's a lot more work to be done there. That's been uh, a um, you know, seriously amazing success as an acquisition, just, just the staff. Uh, webhooks were uh, well received, and there's a lot more work we could be doing there. There is some webhook uh, for porting, but it needs webhooks for por uh, porting, but there needs to be a, um, a lot more work put in there. And try to do a holistic uh, approach to staff, uh, try and have a, a modern outlook um, with standard benefits and the odd couple, for instance, um, car washing uh, once a month and, uh, and haircuts are a fringe benefit as well. Just a little joke for you there. <laughs> so there you go. Any questions? Jared. Um, just, just from a day-to-day, -day, you know, kind of operations perspective, what's the biggest challenge you run into, if you're able to share that? What is my current biggest challenge? Or, uh, yeah, your current biggest challenge. Yeah, the current biggest challenge. So uh, much fans. I think it's is probably consistency of uh, interaction with with customers on the porting and both on the porting the, sub, the, the support side. Um, because everybody has an own individual style, we get information in a different way. We don't. We yes. So it's it's trying to make sure that we um, understand our customers. We don't have biases about customers. Um, we don't. We treat customers equally, depending on their their contractual uh, terms with us. So probably that. Okay, if there's no more questions, Graham, thank you very much. Thank you.